today we're at the Top Steakhouse on East Main Street in Columbus. It's a true mid-century throwback where little has changed since the doors opened in 1955. Over the years, the Top Steakhouse was the place for Columbus movers and shakers to discuss business while enjoying a steak and a few martinis. This is the perfect spot to talk about the iconic mid-century hotel, the Christopher Inn. Built in the mid-1960s, this spectacular 14-floor cylindrical building was located on East Broad Street in the heart of downtown Columbus. To fill me in on the history of the Christopher Inn, I've invited Sarah Carlsberger, whose father and grandfather's company was Lewis Carlsberger & Associates, the architectural firm that designed the Christopher Inn. Also joining the conversation is Denise Ransom, daughter of Leon Ransom, one of the architects who worked on the Christopher Inn, and Bob Loversidge, the current president and CEO of Schooley Caldwell, a local architectural firm founded in 1944 and still going strong today. Now, the Christopher Inn is a place that I didn't have the good fortune to actually see it while it was here, but listening to people talk about it, this was a place that had kind of a mystique to it. What what kinds of memories do you guys have, especially with the family connection to the building? Sarah? It was somewhere that our family spent a lot of time. We would just pack up and, and spend the entire weekend there. Dad's office was close by, so he'd leave us at the hotel. and It was just a, a marvelous place and fun to explore. Denise, you have also a strong family connection to the Christopher Inn. What kind of memories do you have of being there or hearing about it from your dad? I remember from the beginning him talking about designing a round building. And as I mean, maybe I was four or five years old, it's a hard concept. You're learning how to draw at that age. Mm -hmm. And buildings are square. Mm -hmm. And I had always seen his building square, rectangular. I visited a lot of the projects he worked on. So I remember when we went to the groundbreaking. I remember going over there when it was a hole in the ground, watching the cement pours, mm -hmm. different stages of the interior coming alive, mm -hmm. and then, of course, the opening. To me, it was you know, like watching a tree grow. That building had panache, you know. It was it's the only one of its kind in Columbus. I came here as an architecture student about, oh, after maybe it had been built for five years, I think. so. It was one of the places we would visit just because it was different and it was contemporary. The round swimming pool and the, and the lounge. Even the furniture was kind of integral to the design and vice versa. Many of the furniture items were round or chairs that spun. There was even individual sculpture in the room and wall hangings and tapestry and different interesting things that made it different than just a hotel room. Part of it, it was just a, such a departure from the traditional architecture that we were used to at that time. So the finishes were brighter and the lights were unique and there was lots of glass and aluminum. So it was a, it was a breakaway from the very staid traditional downtown hotels like the uh, Great Southern would have been at that time or, mm -hmm. or the Deschler, which was still there. After the war, we kind of rejected a lot of the, the past and started building for the future, and this building was an example of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it sounds like it was a fascinating place, and who, who would go there? Who stayed there? What I, kinds of people? I suspect it was a premier downtown hotel, so yeah. probably business people coming into town, government people coming into town. It was touted as being close to the airport even at that time, mm -hmm. though... Yeah. Really, it isn't all that close. It was a fairly direct route to the airport. And, of course, the name, the Christopher Inn, was from St. Christopher, the patron saint of travelers. So it really was billed toward probably business folks, as you said, mm -hmm. and people coming into town. But people that I talk to today, their remembrances, oh, I went to a wedding reception there, or mm -hmm. we spent our honeymoon mm -hmm. there. So it was something special to go and experience, not just somewhere to stay. Okay. It wasn't a huge hotel. It was only about 140 rooms or something like that, which is what today we would call a boutique hotel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And music was a part of it, too. Oh, there was the yeah. round lounge downstairs, <laughs> a sunken lounge where the Bob Allen Trio would play quite frequently, most every weekend. So that was part of it had entertainment value as well. You've got to show yes. the oh, picture yes. yeah. of the, the plan to expand. There is going to be this huge addition with a rotating restaurant at the top, mm -hmm. very similar to the 
to the like space, space needle. needle in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine if we had that today? Oh. It, would be, it would be a real landmark. Yes, yeah. yeah. it would. I think it would have made downtown Columbus a completely different yeah. place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was actually a full scale model that was probably six feet tall. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that. Oh, one. yeah. I don't remember it was where. huge. It was, it was in the offices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that part never happened. But at any rate, they, they build this hotel. It's successful for a while. Mm -hmm. Then it starts to kind of go downhill. There were financial issues. I think that had to do a lot with downtown just being in decline at that oh, time. Okay. I don't know that it was necessarily issues with the hotel per se, but people will tell you, oh yeah, they roll up the streets in downtown Columbus at five o'clock, and it was just yeah. very quiet. There wasn't much going on. I know, but the change in the economy, I mean, and, and the, mm -hmm. the movement, to the suburbs impacted yeah. downtown mm -hmm. before sure. I moved from Columbus in 78. Columbus was probably like a lot of other cities where downtown was being abandoned. Everybody give me a final thought on the Christopher Inn. If I won the lottery, I'd build it over again. Would you? Yeah, That's, I've always said that, if there were a way, yeah. We can't afford to lose buildings that are that important to our city. We have to look around and say, look, this building made an impact. What we need to do is take a lesson from the fact that we lost the Christopher Inn, especially because it just became a parking lot. That's a tragedy. My lasting memory is uh, happiness and sadness. At a very young age, I got to see the future, and I felt like I was you know, yeah. part of that Jetsons age. You know, <laughs> I, I got to see this is what we were going to grow up and see in, 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 yeah, in buildings yeah. and interiors, and was just it was it was encouraging, but at the same time very sad because. When they told me that was no longer here, I, the first time I saw it, my heart hurt. Thank you guys. Thank you.